old house was spooky. There was no doubt in my mind. In the beginning, the activity was minor. My keys were moved from where I had left them on the table, or floorboards would creak behind us while watching television. But one night, I had to work late. I came home and relieved the babysitter. Then I went into my daughter's room to tuck her in. She was sound asleep. I gave her a kiss on the head and headed to my bedroom to take a shower before bed. Once in the shower, I heard a scratching noise. It was like branches on a window. The only thing is, my bathroom doesn't have a window. So I opened the shower door and peered out to see if my daughter had gotten out of bed or see what she was doing. I did not see anyone. I decided to turn the water off and get out of the shower so I could further investigate. Once in my room dressing, I heard the noise again. This time, it sounded like it was coming from the hallway. I hastily threw my shirt on and went out into the hallway. Again, nothing. I was pretty rattled and confused at what was happening. This noise was not something I have ever heard in my house before. I decided to check on my daughter again, in case someone broke in or something. She was tucked in the corner of her bed, whimpering. I started asking her over and over what was wrong, but she just kept staring at a corner of her room towards the ceiling, then darting her eyes towards me and back to the ceiling. Her eyes were filled with pure terror. I made my way over to her, sat on her bed, and took her into my arms. I started rocking her and putting my fingers through her hair, telling her everything was going to be okay. Did you have a nightmare, honey? She pointed to the ceiling in the corner with a shaky finger and said, Don't you see the man with no eyes right there, Mommy? My eyes almost bugged out of my head. I hadn't turned on any lights in her room. Her room was only softly illuminated with a nightlight. I had to be the protector, so I slowly turned my head in the direction of her finger and looked at the ceiling. I did not see a man with no eyes, but I did see a black mist up by the ceiling. I scooped my daughter up and brought her into my room. That's where we both slept with the door locked, like it would have kept out a spirit. For several years, my daughter has told me about the man with no eyes. She says he does nothing to harm her. He just stares at her in the middle of the night. Sometimes he's on the ceiling, and sometimes he is in her closet. My parents, three siblings and I, moved from Texas to Colorado because my father had received a better job offer. We quickly found a decent house in a quiet neighborhood just outside of town. My father worked days at his job and sometimes well into the evenings too. My mother worked the night shift at the local hospital as an emergency room nurse. Because of this, she would try to sleep as much as she could during the day while we were at school. I only know this because I overheard my parents talking one night when my father came home from work when my mom had that shift off. I heard her telling my dad that she could have sworn she heard children running up and down the stairs during the day while all of us were at school. When she went to check, no one was there. One night, my younger sister Eva woke me up to tell me that she could hear someone scratching the halls in the hallway. I went out in the hallway to check. I could see nothing in the hallway itself, but at the end of the hallway was a bathroom, and it looked like a shadow person was peeking at us around the door with these two bright little eyes. My sister slept in my room that night. A few days later, my other sister Mel was playing in the backyard, playing in her sandbox. She said she heard the sounds of children laughing in the wind, and she was shoved into the sand from something unseen behind her. Another time, my sister Eva and I were in the backyard swinging on the swing set and jabbering amongst ourselves. I had an overwhelming feeling of being watched. When I looked up towards the back of the house, the blinds in the kitchen were bent as if someone were peeking through. Then I noticed those eyes, two bright eyes peering through at us. I looked over at my sister to see if she had seen the same thing, but she was busy swinging higher and humming to herself. When I looked back at the house, the blinds immediately closed as if it noticed I was watching all of a sudden. It was creepy. Luckily, we only lived in that house for a year before my parents were able to save enough to buy a home. 
I still wonder about that house and if anyone had experienced anything similar. Eight years ago, I drove with my two sisters a little over 100 miles to Salt Lake City to have open heart surgery. I was needing two bypasses done to unclog my arteries. Immediately when we arrived, we checked into a local motel and settled in for the night. We decided to rent a chick flick to pass the time, as it was not yet that late. About halfway through the movie, my sister's cell phone rang and she answered it. My other sister and I paused the movie and watched her face go pale. When she ended the call, we asked her what that was about. She said some strange woman told her not to let me get the surgery. She said specifically, don't let her do it. It was odd. She said it didn't sound like anyone she knew, and the phone number came up as private call. We tried to star 69 the number, but to no avail. After a few hours, we shrugged it off. When I woke up the next morning around 5 a.m. to get ready to go to the hospital, I noticed I had missed a call during the night on my cell phone from a private number. Curious, I checked the voicemail. I was floored. I ran to grab my sisters and played the message for them. All the message said was, Don't do this surgery. Don't do it. We gave each other creeped out glances, and I tucked the phone away in my pocket. I could not handle the anxiety both of these calls had given me. I was overwhelmed with dread. When we arrived at the hospital, I asked to reschedule my surgery. The nurse was pretty irritated by our request and told us to wait in the room to speak with the doctor. We waited a good 40 minutes before he came in, and although he was frustrated, we all agreed to move the surgery two weeks out. We walked up to the reception desk to finalize the new date and time, and suddenly everything began to shake. Not like in the movies, mind you. It was obvious we were having an earthquake. My sisters and I found a doorway and huddled there for about 30 seconds until the shaking stopped. We exchanged horrified glances when it was over. Two weeks later, I got my surgery and everything went splendid. To this day, I cannot explain who called me or why, or if it had anything to do with the earthquake. But I'm glad I was not in surgery when the earthquake happened, that's for sure. This story is about a car wash I worked at one summer while saving for college. At first, I thought the owner just needed to upgrade some of the equipment which was faulty. Sometimes, the sprayers would spray soap instead of water, or vice versa. I blame this on a guy I worked with. I thought maybe he was loading the wrong stuff into the wrong sprayers. One day, I went with him and watched him load everything. I was getting miffed that people were complaining. He did everything correct. I went back to help some cars pay and watched as they went through. The sprayer sprayed the wrong stuff again. I had no explanation for that, so I told the owner to think about buying new ones. The cars would just stop in the middle of the wash and not move anymore. We had to look at the electrical, and it was fine. No explanation for that either. Then, one day, I was getting my own car washed. I was to the point of the wash where the soap was going, working correctly on this day, and the windows were all soaped up. As clear as day, a handprint appeared on my front windshield in front of my face. I knew no one had climbed on my car. I would have felt it or heard something. Still, to this day, I have no explanation for any of this. The owner had the equipment looked at. The soap and water were fine. The track is fine. No faulty wiring. I worked at night as a 911 operator. On this particular day, I received the weirdest call of my career. A woman called in around two in the morning, terrified. 
She said there was a ghost in her house, and her and her daughter were terrified to leave the bedroom to get out of the house. In the background of the call, you could literally hear things smashing in the distance. I'm not one to believe in ghosts, so this threw me for quite the loop. I dispatched help to their location and kept asking her if it was possible that an intruder had broken in. She kept telling me no, she was sure. She had seen the thing, and so had her daughter. She said, stoically, that it was not of this world. I tried to keep her calm until help arrived, but then she started screaming that it was now at her bedroom door jangling the doorknob and that it was going to get in. Again, I was saying anything I could to keep her calm. Then I could hear the sound of the doorknob falling on the floor, and I heard her draw in a breath and whisper, Then, the line went dead. I asked for an update after emergency crews arrived. It still spooks me to this day. They had to break in the front door because everything was locked. No intruder was in the house. They found the mom and the daughter in the bedroom. The daughter was whimpering under the bed, while mom was deceased on the floor. The doorknob was lying right inside the bedroom on the floor. When they asked the daughter what had happened, she said, it was the scary man who only appears at night. The mom died of broken heart syndrome. So basically, the woman was scared to death. It still gives me chills to this day.